Thank you. Thank you all very much. Sit, sit, relax. It's wonderful to be in the city that first welcomed my dad to this country so many years ago on this, what should I say, spectacular New England Spring Day. <laughs> we got national network news this morning, not just on the candidacy, but on our weather here in New England. Surrounded by so many friends, introduced by Mary, who's been such a strong and valued supporter and leader here in this great state, with the eyes of the nation upon us some 27 years after another son of Massachusetts began the long quest for the White House, today our marathon begins. And believe me, with the help of the good people of New Hampshire and New England, we're going to cross that finish line on Pennsylvania Avenue. It was Daniel Webster, a son of New Hampshire, while a congressman from Massachusetts, who on the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Bunker Hill had this to say about our nation and about its future. Let us develop the resources of our land, he said, call forth its powers, build up its institutions, and see whether we also, in our day and generation, may not perform something worthy to be remembered. Inspired by Webster's words and the office I seek, pledging not only to enforce the law, but also to obey it. A son of Greek immigrants named Mike Dukakis declares his candidacy for the presidency of the United States. begin this campaign with a question and then with an answer. The question is, why have we come together? And when the Democrats of Iowa and New Hampshire and the South, when Democrats all across this country go to their caucuses and their primaries to vote, what will they really be voting about? The answer is not just about Mike Dukakis or any of the other candidates. The answer is about America. I believe that each generation of Americans has an opportunity to define and redefine the American dream. From one generation to the next, America has been a covenant, a set of promises about the future which brings our people together. The pilgrims who sailed into Plymouth three centuries ago defined that dream as religious liberty. The patriots who dumped tea into Boston Harbor two centuries ago defined that dream as political liberty. The immigrants who have come to these shores since then, like my parents, were drawn by the dream of a better life. And those who went to other shores to defend our freedom, as many did here and across this country, were inspired by the dream of peace. Today, we have our own chance. We have a golden moment to define the dream that our children will call America. Because this campaign will decide what our children have a right to expect of America and what America has a right to expect of them. Above all, above all, I believe our children have a right to live in a land with vibrant and sustained economic growth and with genuine economic opportunity for every single American in every part of this country. Because in America, good jobs and good schools and good skills should be the birthright of every one of us. No matter who we are or where we come from, or what the color of our skin. I believe our children have a right to live in a country that is caring and compassionate and concerned about all of its citizens. 
a country where the homeless are housed and the hungry are fed, and where the dependent have the opportunity to achieve the best that is in them and to build independent, self-sufficient lives, and a country where we recognize AIDS for what it is, the single most serious threat to the public health we faced in our lifetime and a disease that must be conquered. I believe our children have a right to live in an environment that is clean and safe and healthy, with clean air and clean water, and with a nuclear regulatory commission that understands the lessons of Chernobyl and is committed above all else to protect the health and safety of our citizens and the people of this country. I believe our children have a right to a foreign policy that reflects American values. They don't deserve a shooting war in Nicaragua. They deserve a war against poverty and injustice and exploitation throughout Latin America. They don't deserve secret wars cooked up by armchair Rambos. They deserve to see our Constitution preserved and protected and defended. They don't deserve wars in space. They deserve peace on Earth. I believe our children have a right to competent leaders. They deserve a president who will demand the best of himself, whether he is at the table with foreign leaders or with his own staff. They deserve a president who knows what's going on and knows what he's doing. They deserve a president who will stand shoulder to shoulder with heroes like Raul Alfonsín of Argentina and Cory Aquino of the Philippines, who have put their lives on the line for democracy. I believe our children have a right to live in an America where integrity is the watchword. And they deserve better than the sight of Wall Street insiders being led off to jail in handcuffs or government officials who use public life mainly to make contacts for private life, or an administration that seems to have its own set of special prosecutors. Two years from now, a new president will enter the White House. We can't possibly predict all of the problems and the challenges that will land on his desk. But we can predict the character and the competence of the person who enters the Oval Office. I welcome those tests. Americans ought to measure our integrity. You have a right to know our values. You deserve to weigh our record and not just our rhetoric. So in this campaign, I want Americans to judge me not only on my promise to fight apartheid in South Africa, but also on my performance in fighting injustice here in America. I want my stand on national defense to be measured not just in hardware, but also in the passion I feel for these free shores which welcome Kitty's family and my own. I want Americans to measure me not only by my commitment to fight terrorism, but also what I have done to get tough on drug pushers and tax cheats and drunk drivers and polluters. I want Americans not only to imagine me in the White House, but also to study me in the State House. Because, as a sitting governor, I'm tested every month and every week and every hour. So, as you look each of us over, ask more than what we are going to do. Ask what we have already done. Ask more than whether we have new ideas. Ask whether we have already made new ideas work. Ask more than what kind of president we will be. Ask what kind of people we are and what kind of people we have around us. Ask more of your candidates, because the next president is going to be asking more of you. To be producers, not just consumers. To be citizens, not just spectators. To contribute your best to America. As Americans, we are blessed with certain inalienable rights. But we are also obliged by sacred responsibilities. 
My mother and father summed up the American dream for me in just 11 words. Much has been given to you and much is expected of you. That belief has carried me to New Hampshire this day. With your help and your prayers, I'll carry that belief with me right into the White House. year and a half in high schools and shopping malls, in barns and factories, in kitchens and in city and town squares, the American people will be sizing up the candidates of both parties. It can be a noisy and a frustrating process, but the frustrations are the dues of leadership and the noise is the music of freedom. Look around you. Gathered here today are young and old from all walks of life with different backgrounds and different heritages, proud of your region, proud of your state and heritage, a real community. You believe, as I do, in fulfilling the promise of America for every citizen in every part of every state and every region of this land. And let us never forget that the promise of America is also a promise between generations, from old to young, from the present to the future, drawing strength and inspiration from the past. As I begin this race, I can't help recalling that the first marathon was run in ancient Greece, and that on important occasions, Athenians concluded ceremonies like these with a pledge. That pledge, that covenant, is as eloquent and as timely today as it was 2,000 years ago. Let me paraphrase it for you now. We will never bring disgrace to this our country by any act of dishonesty or of cowardice. We will fight for the ideals of this, our country. We will revere and obey the laws. We will strive to quicken our sense of civic duty. Thus, in all these ways, we will transmit this country greater, better, stronger, prouder, and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. Until today, this has been my pledge to the people of Massachusetts. From this day forward, it will be my pledge to the American people. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs>